Hey everyone, welcome to another installment of Harry Potter Theory. Today, we're going to be discussing the enigmatic gate of death that is the Veil. Now, if one were to venture through the corridors of the Ministry of Magic for long enough, they'd likely, eventually, find themselves standing before the enigmatic Veil, a haunting manifestation nestled within the death chamber of the Department of Mysteries. And when faced with such an enigmatic wizarding structure, it's hard not to ask questions. What is the Veil? Who created it? And how does the Veil connect to the wizarding world's understanding of life, death, and the beyond? Join me as we apparate through time and space, diving deep into the mysteries of the Veil and shedding light on its presence within wizarding history. What is it? You may remember the heart-stopping moment when, in Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, we stepped into the Department of Mysteries, a tangled labyrinth of enchantment and hush-hush operations tucked within the heart of the Ministry of Magic. And who could forget the unspeakables, highly dedicated and secretive witches and wizards that dedicated their lives to working in the department? But perhaps the most chilling revelation to come from our introduction to this department is the Veil. This ancient relic, time-worn and filled with whispered secrets, resides in an ebon-drenched chamber known as the Death Chamber. This stone dais, draped with a crumbling, ripped, and strangely memorizing black veil, was like nothing we'd seen before in our journey through the wizarding world. The massive ancient stone archway, which stands in the center of the death chamber, acts as a sort of portal between the lands of the living and the dead. It is believed that those who step through the veil, or fall through, become trapped in the world of death. Those who stand close enough and have belief in the afterlife are also able to hear faint whisperings that appear to come from the other side. Some characters in the series, like Harry and Luna, found themselves able to hear the beckoning from the other side of this draped enigma. On the other hand, characters less touched by death or perhaps shielded from it, like Hermione and Ginny, heard nothing but silence. For these reasons, many believe the Veil to be a glimmering threshold guiding departed souls into the next realm, a gateway between the realms of the living and the dead that was created by ancient witchcraft. At least, that's one theory. Another theory posits that the Veil was created by the Department of Mysteries as a means to study death and the other side more closely. After all, the Ministry is no stranger to tampering with forces beyond their comprehension, as we've seen with the Time Turners and Dangerous Prophecies. Fortunately, JK Rowling herself has weighed in on the enigma of the Veil, confirming its prevalence as the divide between life and death during a July 2007 interview with Bloomsbury. While she didn't go into detail about the Veil's origins, it's clear that the Veil holds great significance in the world of Harry Potter, embodying a powerful connection between the realms of the living and the deceased. Expanding on this further, there's actually a phrase in the English language, beyond the Veil, that refers to the mysterious state beyond death. The phrase in turn originates from a Hebrew phrase describing the location of the tabernacle in a Jewish temple. History The Ministry of Magic is the primary form of government in the magical world, at least in the UK, and was founded in 1707 along with the appointment of the very first Minister for Magic, Ulick Gamp. Like a muggle government, the Ministry's responsibilities are vast, as they are the primary body that attempts to sustain law and order in the magical world. And like any system of government, in an effort to cover as much ground as possible, the primary governmental body is systematically divided to focus on different sectors of the wizarding world. These sectors, or departments, cover the more common areas like the Department of Magical Law Enforcement and the Department of Magical Transportation. But there are also other departments reserved for less obvious pursuits. This brings us to Level 9, and the Enigmatic Department of Mysteries. The Department of Mysteries is responsible for studying the mysteries of the wizarding world, Mysteries associated with love, space, thought, time, death, and other things. Basically anything that is unknown. The divisions of this department are broken up by area of study, and includes the following. The Brain Room, the Hall of Prophecy, the Death Chamber, the Love Chamber, the Space Chamber, and the Time Room. These rooms are accessed via the Room of Doors, a large circular room where everything is blank. But well above anything else, the most mysterious thing about the Department of Mysteries is that it actually preceded the existence of the Ministry itself. The Ministry was established in 1707, and the Department of Mysteries had activity as early as 1672, at least activity that's documented. Given that the Veil is located inside of the Department of Mysteries, 
and be willing to bet that the ancient archway also far preceded the existence of the ministry. In fact, given that this structure predates the Ministry of Magic, I'd like to put forth the idea that the Ministry of Magic and Department of Mysteries were actually constructed around it, marking the chamber off as a place of significance. To expand on this further, let me next take a look at who created it. Now let me first just say that the answer of who created the veil has never been explicitly mentioned anywhere. However, there is one theory that stands out to me above the rest, and that's that Death himself created the enigmatic archway. The figure of Death plays a significant role in the Harry Potter series, specifically in Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, drawing from the Tale of the Three Brothers, which is a story featured in the Tales of Beetle the Bard. Death interacts with the three fabled Peveril brothers and bestows upon them three magical objects. These objects, known as the Deathly Hallows, encompass the Elder Wand, the Resurrection Stone, and the Invisibility Cloak. Each object in the story can be correlated to the desire to control or cheat death. The Elder Wand, which is represented by the vertical line in the symbol, is believed to be the most powerful wand in existence. It signifies the desire for power, and its wielders often meet an untimely end due to the constant pursuit of power over death. The Resurrection Stone, symbolized by the circle, has the ability to bring back the dead, albeit as mere shadows of their former selves. The stone emphasizes the desire to reconnect with the deceased and the potential dangers of meddling with the natural order of life and death. And lastly, the Invisibility Cloak, depicted as the Triangle, grants its wearer the power to be invisible. In the tale, it symbolizes the acceptance of one's inevitable mortality, as the third brother ultimately uses it to evade death until he is ready to embrace it. Although the tale of the three brothers is a fictitious story within the series, it serves as an allegory for the human desire to overcome, control, or escape death. As such, the figure of death and its portrayal in the tale represents the natural force that all living beings must face. It also stresses the timeless message of accepting one's mortality and the perils of attempting to subvert the natural course of life. And though death is a fictitious character even within the magical world, I can't help but wonder if there's some truth to the tale of the three brothers, particularly as all three Hallows have proven to be very much real. The Veil, much like the Deathly Hallows in the tale, seems to possess incomprehensible qualities related to life, death, and the afterlife. Its enigmatic nature and connection to death might imply that an entity as potent as death itself could be behind its existence. A Veil is even mentioned in the tale of the three brothers when describing the second brother's resurrected fiancé. Yet she was silent and cold, separated from him as though by a veil. But I'm certainly not ignorant to the fact that the existence of some tangible form of death opens up a whole other can of worms. Death gave all three brothers one of the fabled Deathly Hallows, and they all had their own unique fate. But it also seems like, regardless of the decisions that the brothers made, or the actions that they took, they ultimately all faced death once again, and the way that it's depicted in the story shows them physically encountering this same personification of death that they faced in the beginning. If the tale is real and Beetle the Bard was simply retelling an aspect of history, how did he know about what had happened? What did he really know of the relationship between death and the brothers? Was it fact or fiction? One thing to consider is that the tales of Beetle the Bard continually reinforce that these stories are in fact the author's original creations. However, that certainly doesn't mean that Beetle did not draw inspiration from his real life experiences, the things that he had done, or the people that he had met. J.K. Rowling supplies the following foreword to the book. If his stories accurately reflect his opinions, he rather liked muggles, whom he regarded as ignorant rather than malevolent. He mistrusted dark magic, and he believed that the worst excesses of wizard kind sprang from the all too human traits of cruelty, apathy, or arrogant misapplication of their own talents. The heroes and heroines who triumph in his stories are not those with the most powerful magic, but rather those who demonstrate the most kindness, common sense, and ingenuity. There's little evidence to support either argument, that these stories were fabricated entirely, or that Beetle drew inspiration from something that he had witnessed in his life. However, given that the Hallows actually exist, I'm willing to bet that it was the latter. We know the three Hallows genuinely exist, and that can be confirmed, but was the personification of a deathly figure just Beetle adding his own spin to the story, or was death a real wizard? This is where it gets tricky. As it stands, there is no proof that suggests that death personified is indeed real. His existence is only mentioned in one work, and it's a fictional one. 
To say that death exists because of this one book for children is a stretch, particularly as the existence of the Hallows is the only real argument one could make for his existence, and there could be many ways that the Hallows themselves were created. Albus Dumbledore didn't seem to have much faith in the validity of death's existence. So it's true, asked Harry. All of it? The Peveril brothers? Were the three brothers of the tale, said Dumbledore, nodding. Oh yes, I think so. Whether they met death on a lonely road, I think it more likely that the Peveril brothers were simply gifted, dangerous wizards who succeeded in creating those powerful objects. The story of them being death's own hallows seems to me the sort of legend that might have sprung up around such creations. It's hard to answer the question as to whether or not death truly existed. There are many powerful artifacts in the Harry Potter universe, and the Hallows, though powerful, don't seem outside the realm of possibility for other powerful witches and wizards. With that said, if death truly was responsible for creating the Three Hallows, I'd be willing to bet that he was also responsible for the creation of the Veil. One other closing thought is that the Veil and the Resurrection Stone from the Tale of the Three Brothers have undeniable similarities. Both objects serve as gateways or barriers between those who are living and dead. The only difference is the achievable level of communication. With the stone, you can generate actual physical shades that you can directly interact with. Whereas with the veil, it has been expressed that you can only hear, if you listen closely, those from the land of the dead. We know that when Cadmus, the brother who picks the stone, and death have their interaction, the stone that death gives Cadmus was simply picked up from the riverbank. Whether Death enchanted that stone right then and there is up for you to decide, but given that the veil is constantly described as crumbling, cracked, and so ancient that it's barely able to stand, I think that the resurrection stone is perhaps just a piece that broke off. It may seem like a bit of a stretch, but I think there's got to be some kind of connection. What do you guys think? Do you have any theories as to who created the enigmatic veil in the Ministry's death chamber? Was Death real? Are the Resurrection Stone and Veil vale linked in some way? Please let me know down in the comment section below. If you enjoy the content, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Also, be sure to check out more content over on Harry Potter Theory Extra, where I post an additional three videos a week. Until next time, remember, it does not do to dwell on dreams and forget to live.